Hello everyone. I'm going to jump right into this little Houdini tip. So I wanted to go over something that many users may not even be familiar with. So first off, we have with our view, we can set up different things depending on what we're working on. So by default, Houdini sets our view and our windows to build. However, there's another category, this another drop down menu right here that has a bunch of different um, setups. Now what this actually does is this is actually um, a radial menu drop down. Now to activate your radial menu in Houdini is by holding down the C button while your mouse is hovering in the viewport. So if I hold down C, we see that it brings up these different tabs and I can hover over and go into these and we finally are able to get to different sections where it has um, predetermined shelf tools. So if I was modeling something, for example, let me drop down a box here. If I was modeling, I could hold down C, go into model, go into polygons, and let's say I need to bevel this cube. And so um, I, it already initiates that for me right there. So um, it's, it, it's a handy dandy shortcut, essentially. So I'm just going to delete that. However, it gets a little tedious if you have to navigate to all these different um, menus. And so they have built different selections. So, you know, if you're doing poly modeling, you can just change that by default. And then when you press C, it just brings up poly modeling um, adjustments, which is quite nice because it already has things set up for you. And so it makes the modeling process much, much faster um, than if you have to constantly go to this model tab and or, or this polygon tab and have to click on edge loop just to add a simple edge loop when right now you could simply hold down C, click here, and then do your own thing. Hit enter. Um, that's the poly split, but let's say the edge loop here. Um, I'll delete that other poly split here to kind of show you better. Bam, bam, and bam. So we see obviously that that's faster doing it that way than constantly having to come up here, click here, come back up here, click here to add edge loops. So that's just like the basics of a radial menu here in Houdini. Now, what's also really cool about this setup is not only do they have predetermined menus, but they also have a way for you to customize it yourself. And that's what I really like about Houdini in general is it gives you so much power to customize tools and things in order for you to get creative and build whatever you want. It also comes at a cost. Honestly, sometimes it makes things less user friendly or it's kind of hard to do. Sometimes you do need to know a little bit of code, but overall, if you can get into that workflow, it, it actually gives you a ton of control. So I'm going to show you just how to kind of create your own custom radial menu. So we have these preset menus and right now I have my, my own menu set up. So if I go to my modeling setup, when I hold down C, I've, I've kind of built a couple extra functions or tools that make things easier. For example, when I um, use the poly extrude node, if I click on a face here and use the poly extrude, I can go in this direction um, up and down. But if I were to say transform my box here like this, and let's say I still want to extrude this box face in the X or negative X direction. If I come and click on this face and go to poly extrude, it only lets me extrude based on the primitive edge normals or point normals, or I can also give it a custom attribute. Now, sometimes I find it annoying to have to come down and like make my own attribute on the fly. And so what I did is I, in this extra tab, just had different selectors um, in order to give me a quick direction vector. So for example, if I hit X direction here, it drops down an attribute adjust vector node, which just simply creates 
if I middle mouse click here, it creates an X direction vector. So that way, if I drop that down and now I click on this face, go to poly extrude, instead of just going based on the primitive normal, I can now quickly go to my attribute and make sure that I can adjust this in the exact direction that I wanted to, um, which is handy for modeling different things. So that's an example of a little custom setup that I did on my own in order to make my workflow faster. And I want you all to be able to know how to do that yourself. So what you can do is instead of selecting some of these predetermined setups is you can go to edit current and instead of actually editing this one what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new regular uh, regular menu okay so it comes up new I'm gonna just name this example example okay and we see it's uh, empty so what we can do now is you can search for preset nodes. So let's say edge loop um, is something that we want in for modeling. So I could just drag that and click it here. And we see it brings up this simple Python script function that essentially executes that node. So I can hit apply, accept, and now if I go to my example here, we see if I hold down C, it comes up with edge loop. And so now I can easily add edge loops super fast and not have to use the shelf tool. Um, but there's also ways where you can code in different scripts, for example. So let's jump back and say edit current. And now in here, what, what, what I could do is maybe just add a script action, for example. So you could obviously change the icon, whatever you'd want to do, and that could be great for you there. Um, I, I'm not going to, but let's say, just for this example, we're gonna say print something. Obviously this is useless, but it's just showing you that this is just a Python script that you could simply say print hello world. And I'll hit apply and accept and I will bring up my Python shell. So now in my radio menu, if I do um, print something, we see it printed out hello world. So we know it's working. And so now that we know that that's working, we could go back to edit current and there's several things we could do. So it gives you the opportunity to kind of go crazy and do whatever you want in order to fit your needs uh, for whatever you're working on. And yeah, I think it's super useful. Um, and I would definitely suggest implementing your own custom radial menus and start creating things. One last thing I'll go over is not only can you print things or, or do certain things as you could actually, you know, do something like, you know, Houdini selected nodes and we'll say nodes is equal to that. And for each node in nodes, print node. So just to show you real quick, um, if I'm working, let's say in a modeling setup right now, I'm working on this box and I do print something, obviously nothing selected, but now we see that uh, this, this node is selected. So as, as we continue to work on this object, typically this last object is always selected as a new um, object gets added on. For example, if I click here with this poly extrude and click on the shelf, we see we do that. And now if I went to print something, we know the poly extrude node is selected. So knowing that in here, we could then say, you know, our node, whatever, like the first node that's selected. So if that node actually exists or something, then we could add custom things to it. So let's say with the poly extrude node, um, we, we would want the group 
to be set to star or something. This is just a simple example. It's a bobus example. But you could essentially just say node.parm group um, dot set and let's set it to 10 just so we know that something's working. And I'll hit apply and accept. Just delete that. So right now I'm gonna click this and um, hit poly extrude here. And maybe if I print something, we got an error, obviously, because I was setting that to string. So this is a good way to also see that obviously errors come up. So I'll go back here and we'll set it to 10 with a string instead of an int. Accept. Now, if I do that again, we have an error because obviously that's not selected. So there, finally, we go. And we see that it adjusted this poly extrude node to only extrude the the tenth primitive in this case. And um, if we go back here and turn on our primnums, we see that that was the tenth primitive. So obviously that was a horrible example of actually doing something interesting. But my point of showing you is that you could essentially create custom commands. Um, based on things that you're selecting, maybe geometry you're selecting in the viewport or nodes that you have selected, and incorporate that into your radial menu. So that's it for this quick Houdini tip. Um, I'd be really interested to know if you have any other suggestions on radial menus or, or if you found this interesting. Be sure to let me know in the comments, and we'll see you guys next time.